This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. All right, what's the outlook for emerging markets? Well, luckily, we've got two experts. We have Kate Shapiro. She is the lead portfolio manager at Sentinel International Equity Fund, where she helps manage around $23 billion. Also, we have Ori Lonsman. He is an expert in emerging markets, and he's calling for caution right now. He is the president of Platinum Partners Value Arbitrage, where he manages over half a billion dollars. Ori, good to have you with us. Kate, of course, always here. nice to have you. Um, Ori, let me begin by pointing out your caution right now, because you've been following emerging markets for quite a while, and now you're saying, wait a minute, be a little bit careful when you invest in emerging markets. Why? I mean, you know, I'm definitely still long-term bullish on emerging markets. I think that's where the best growth is available. Um, right now, I think that emerging markets are going to be reasonably correlated with the U.S. market, with uh, global equity markets in general. Um, I expect that after this recent run-up, we're likely to trade off a little bit, um, possibly as much as 10 percent on the U.S. market. That would probably translate into as much as 15 to 20 percent on EM. At that point, I'd probably be looking to get in with both feet. You can tell he's an expert. He uses that acronym, <laughs> EM, Emerging Markets. <laughs> Kate Shapiro, talk about what's happening in China specifically, because are they really able to refocus most of the demand internally? I mean, is it a domestic demand story for China? Well, we believe that, that that's the new stage for China. It, it Back at the early part of this decade, it was more of an export story. Now for them to grow, they really have to turn to their own domestic economy. And they have lots of levers, ultimately, to pull. They can um, stimulate the consumer through helping with education spending, with health care spending, which is a huge area for them. Um, they can also help with um, offering stimulus on whether it's buying houses, which, of course, right now they're not doing. They're trying to pull that one back. Back, but also on buying some consumer goods, anything from telephone, televisions to washing machines. And also to like mobile devices. I mean, this idea that trying to get young Chinese consumers to buy Chinese products. Right. And they are. And they are. And when you think about it right now, about a third of the Chinese population is at what some would consider close to a developed market level of GDP per capita. That's somewhere around eight to ten thousand dollars per year. So, so a lot less than we are here in the United States. Over the next 10 years, another third of the population, so another 350 to 400 million people may be reaching that level of GDP per capita, which is a whole new country in terms of potential buying power. That's the long-term story for China. Now, one of the, I just wanted to get in. One of the stocks that you're looking at in order to participate in this is a life insurance company, China Life, right? right? So one of the ideas is as... Um, uh, as you get wealthier, whether you're starting from a very low base or a high base, you look for ways to save money. And instead of just putting it into your mattress, obviously you can start by putting some money into the bank. But, but insurance is certainly one of the means by which um, investors save. And um, the studies have shown that as the income levels start to cross, say, 3000 to 4000 dollars per annum GDP per capita, that's when insurance starts to really kick in, and, and China's really there now. Uri, what about the domestic economy in China? Is that a good place to be putting money? Well, I certainly think it is. And also, you know, we had a, you know, a significant news item in the last few days where China is allowing a wider band on the currency, and we can debate how significant that is, but presumably that means that the currency is going to get more expensive versus the other major U.S. currencies. If that's the case, then China is going to have to replace even more export demand than they did beforehand. And so, A, I, I, you know, I agree certainly with, with the thesis uh, uh, being posited here. But beyond that, it's actually become really important that it be right, because uh, I think their exports are going to be challenged more as the currency appreciates.